Welcome to Rob's Fix the Chop. Today on the bench, I have something that's really been making me mad. I've got this little compressor that I use when I'm working kind of away from the garage. And uh, it's been driving me nuts because last year it started where every once in a while it wouldn't shut off, right? And so it builds up pressure and then it lets the pressure off and then the pressure drops way down. And now it's doing it all the time, right? So there's a pressure sensor in here um, that's just a switch. When it gets to the 150 pounds, that switch shuts off. And that's supposed to be working here. It's And have a little hysteresis, right? So it has to drop down before it turns back on. And uh, it's been driving me nuts because, the, you know, I've been doing some remodeling and uh, nailing. And I'm trying to nail. It runs down. It stuck, turns on. It blows the pressure valve. It drops all the way down. Driving me nuts, right? So... So that's what I'm going to fix today. I'm going to put in a new pressure valve. I've got it right here. And uh, I'm going to replace the one that's in there. And I don't think it's very hard, right? And uh, so, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so let's switch it on. It's already got some air in it, but let's switch it on and we'll see if it's going to uh, overpress. Okay, so it should be shutting off right away, pretty soon. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't look good. So you can see it blew the pressure relief valve once it got up around 180. And um, yeah, so that's the problem, right? And so that the, once it blows the pressure release valve, then you've got no, no pressure. And uh, you're not able to get your work done. But there is this uh, uh, valve on the bottom. So you want to get the air out of here, first of all. And, um, and there's got probably be, there might be water in there too. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I think it's just icing up a little bit. Anyways, we'll let that go. All right. Now I got it all out. Let's unplug it. And um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take off this. I think that's a Torx 10. And then we got then we got some screws back here. Pull those out. Right here. <coughs> Okay. 
right? And then we can slide this up and kind of start to get that off. But we got to take this part off too. So then I think we want, what is this, a Torx 15? Yep. Because this handle's kind of holding. You know, that crazy thing. Kind of holding the, the two sides together. Okay. Right. Take that off, and then we've got this screw, and I think there's one inside here, and one in here. Again, that's the Torx 15 again. A little hard to get to. Hmm, how am I going to get to that? Okay, that's going to be a little rough. Let me see what I can do about that. Okay, I got a little lucky. I had this long. Um, you can see how far in this guy goes here. And my torque screwdriver wasn't even close, but I got this guy here. I think this will work. All right. And then... We gotta separate this guy. <laughs> All right. That happens, I guess. That's kind of interesting there. I mean, the whole crankshaft is external, and then it's a dry cylinder. Huh. So we want to pull this motor out of here. So I think we want to probably might want to take a picture of these wiring, this wire, right? But um, we want to take off this ground. And then disconnect this. Comes off quite easily. And then this comes out. And when this comes out, like I said, be sure to unplug it. When this comes out, then, then we want to disconnect this side of the motor as well. And then we can kind of set the motor aside. You can get a, a good look at that thing. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that works. Anyway, so, but then there's our pressure regulator right, right in there, right? So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We have our, our hot wire coming in, goes through the, the power switch, goes through the pressure switch, and then comes out and goes to the motor. This grounds, and then this other one goes to the motor. 
you could not get simpler than that, right? And so, disconnect this guy. Oof, that's on there. Um, All right, disconnect that, disconnect that. And then we'll just pull this little screw. Nope. Let's see. Pull the screw right here. And then, then we gotta pull the, the hose for it off here. And so I'm just going to get a wire cutter. I'm just going to get a wire cutter and twist this guy back and forth. You're pretty much essentially breaking it off. Good enough, right? Okay, pull that off there. Right, and then our switch should come right out. Yeah. All right, so we we'll want to put our other switch in. Let's see. Put that in there. And you know, the wire lengths are kind of different. I mean, the yellow one's the right size, but this one's kind of extra long. Unknown, why? Okay, but uh, it's all right, we're gonna tuck that back there. Maybe I'll put it like this. Okay, I got my wire in there. And uh, yeah, I don't know why that, it's so long, but that should be fine, right? Okay, that's good. So then we're gonna bring our motor back. And this goes How does this go? Okay, so we gotta connect our, uh, let's see, our white wire to the back. All right, and bring this one around. Put that in there. Whoops, that's gonna cord. So our cord then has to come through here first, come through here, okay. 
of a fun puzzle. Right? Oh, yeah. And then this. Hmm. Yeah, I got that wrong. Okay. Okay. So this guy has to come. Over like this. It doesn't feel very tight. We'll have to tighten that up. So we want our yellow wire coming up and around. We want our ground coming from below. And we want to put our little pads in this square here. What? <clears throat> Okay, that goes in there. And I'm going to tighten these up a little bit because they would seem kind of loose. A little loose. Oh, yeah, nice and tight. Okay, so that's in there, that's in there. And I lost one of my little rubber bumpers here. All right, and I'll put this back in. Okay, <clears throat> now this Okay, that goes in like that. Right? Okay. Everything's in place. Everything feels good. Where does this guy... This guy comes through like this. Okay, so I took a look back in the video, and this is actually inside like this, right? Okay, so we'll have to get that. And we've got our screw in there. Let's... All right. Okay, that goes pretty good. Make sure our cord is in there. And then... Okay, and so we got all our, I'm just going to leave that a little bit loose now, and, uh, okay, so I don't have it screwed in yet, but, um, but now we can kind of get this to where we want it to be. I'd say. All right, well, just gonna have to make that tight bend with it. All right, so let's 
Now, I just got a regular, the, the kit came with a um, compressed, uh, compressible hose clamp like that, right? That you, you get in there and you pinch it like that. And it looks all right, but I, I don't know. I just prefer to use the ones with the screw on them. So I just went out to the garage, I grabbed one and uh, get this guy on here. Bring that down. Okay, and then let's get this back on here. Slide it back. I don't know, that seems a little bit long, but on the other hand, if I make it any shorter, uh, maybe I'll try it a little bit shorter. Oh, that is okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. I don't know. Feel a little kinky right here. Not going to sweat it though because it's just a pressure relief, right? It's just a safety feature. Don't sweat it. All right. <clears throat> now, get our handle back on. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's not too kinked. Um, it'll be fine. And we want to get our handle back on. And... Um, Get our screws in there. That's what's holding the top of the case together. Right? And then... Then all we've got are the last two screws on either side. <laughs> all right, let's try it out. I actually like it without the... I like it without the plastic thing on it myself. Um, but that's your choice. Okay, so let's give it a try. And uh, oh, it went on. That's a good. Uh, that's a good sign. All right, well, that's close. I don't know whether the gauge off or the, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's stopped pretty close. I don't know whether it's the shutoff switch or the gauge it's off. It's off a couple of pounds, right? So let's um, let some air out of it. All right, that looks pretty good. So it came on around 120. That's some pretty good hysteresis, I guess you'd call it. And uh, yeah. Well, that's it for Rob's fix and chop air compressor edition. Um, I just need to fix this thing. It's been driving me nuts and uh, looks like it's gonna work pretty good for me. And it's not that old, I don't know. So this valve, I think I paid like a, around $18 for it, and I'll put a, a link for it down below. Um, 
but you could also pay $38 and get the original Porter Cable one. But it didn't seem to me like the Porter Cable one was that high quality to begin with. Uh, I don't think, I personally don't feel like it ever should have gone out. But um, yeah, so I'll put a link for that. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.